My name is Sibusi Sibetusi. I'm an education officer for Etebini Water and Sanitation within the Etebini Municipality. Uh, our job is to raise awareness and create um, awareness uh, within the communities and schools uh, under the Etebini Municipality. So this month of March, we are celebrating the Water Month, having uh, the important Water Day that is called World Water Day, which is on the 22nd of March of every year. This year, the theme for this year is Valuing Water. So on this day of the 22nd of March, we will be looking at uh, raising uh, awareness and commemorating this day by looking and remembering all those people uh, that are about 2 billion people globally that do not have uh, access to fresh and clean water. So what we are doing as Etebini Municipality, we're going to the schools and creating awareness, intensifying uh, the awareness within the schools and communities uh, by rem reminding people to save water as much as they can. Hello, my name is Nomosa Butelezi. I am an education officer for Etebini Water and Sanitation under Education Division. Well, we all know that what March is Water Month. Uh, there are some few topics that I'm going to discuss. The importance of environment and water. Water for the environment underpins a range of activities. For example, recreational fishing, uh, tourism, agriculture, etc., etc. But there is a most important aspect when it comes to the environment, which are healthy rivers. Now, we all know that healthy rivers carry water to homes, to schools, uh, to churches, uh, as well as the businesses. Along the way, they nourish ecosystem. We know that human beings rely on plants and animals, the vice versa. So in order for these species to survive, we need each other. The fishes, they need us. The animals, they need us, as well as plants. Uh, rivers are the lifeblood. What do I mean about the lifeblood? They make towns more livable. They give us a space to unwind. They give us a space to relax as well as to connect with the environment or the nature, if I may say. Now, in order for us to keep our rivers healthy, we need what? We need to keep them clean and safe in every manner. Human beings, they play a very important role. Every time when you want to do every, anything, make sure that you keep our rivers clean so that all these species can get healthy the rivers. Human beings also use water for different purposes, for spiritual purposes, for cultural purposes, as well as for human well-being, uh, that is for swimming purposes. Uh, environment and the rivers, how do they connect? Water for the environment is a very important aspect when it comes to uh, making natural systems survive, as well as thrive for benefits for all. If I say benefits for all, benefit for humans, benefits for plants as well as animals. Drought plays a very important role when it comes to supply of water. We all know that when it comes to the water supply, we rely on, on rainwater. But in the past years, we had a problem of drought. Now, we all know that the water cycle depends on uh, the rain, which is our first step. Uh, climate change has caused more disturbances when it comes to the level of rainfall in our dams. So we all know that in the past few years, most countries and cities have experienced the drought crisis or the pandemic, if I may say. Now we always encourage and educate people that they need to save each and every drop because it counts. What if you live without water? We all know that you can live without electricity because you can supplement electricity with some other things, but you cannot supplement water with any anything. So it is your responsibility, my responsibility to save each and every drop because it counts. We cannot live without water, but it is your responsibility to be a South African citizen. Save water now for the future generation. Uh, the initiatives that the Etebini Water and Sanitation is implementing for the communities, we have a program that is called Raising Citizens' Voice, where we train ward committees and content, uh, content citizens 
uh, to detect leaks and to also detect illegal connections and also to be cautious of uh, the ways of conserving water because we think that everybody must be educated on the tips of saving water and how to detect leaks and uh, illegal connections. And also in schools, we have programs and uh, that we implement, such as water detectives, where the units, uh, more especially the education officers from the education division, go to schools and uh, train about 10 learners per school uh, and, uh, on how to uh, detect leaks and how to read the meter and how to record the reading. So we teach them uh, to do water audits in schools. We are trying to help all those schools that have got high bills and that have got uh, undetected leaks underground uh, on how to detect those leaks so that they can sort out their problems and to reduce the consumption and also the money that they pay for the municipality. We hope that by uh, teaching the young ones, they can become uh, responsible citizens in the future. And as part of our initiatives, we also uh, create awareness on how to uh, save water. Like for instance, we educate people on the importance of making sure that you close your taps properly. Uh, because if you do not uh, close your tap properly, it means it will leave leaks and that will also generate income uh, in, uh, in your bill in the, uh, on the month end. The other thing we are saying, people must take shorter showers because by taking longer showers, that will mean you are also escalating your bill and also wasting water. So we're saying people must not uh, use hose pipe to wash their cars, but use buckets uh, to wash their cars. Reusing of water. When you've been uh, washing your clothes and then maybe the water that you are rinsing your, lin your clothes with, you can take that water, uh, flush the toilet or maybe water your garden. Um, we use print media. We use electronic media such as uh, radio and the print media, uh, the local newspapers and also um, other news, forms of newspapers to spread the word because we know that if we include this in these uh, forms of media, people can learn one or two things uh, from uh, those tips of saving water because water is a precious resource, we need to save it. So uh, by teaching one another, a day a person can learn one thing and the next day a person can uh, learn another thing. Uh, by the end of the week, we can find that you would have learned maybe three things and you will, uh, you will change your behavior and by changing your behavior you can teach another person and we will get where we want to be. Um, we have uh, people coming from rural areas. We will remember that historically we have inherited about 70% of these uh, people uh, that are coming from rural areas that did not have access to uh, clean and safe water previously. So as they are coming to the city, the city has to try by all means to cater for all these people. So what are we doing to manage these um, uh, people to get access to clean water? The city has tried and uh, connected all these people in rural areas with the yard taps. And when we are installing these yard taps, we are installing semi-pressure system. But the difficulties that we are encountering is that these people, uh, they convert our semi-pressure system to full uh, pressure system. Uh, the full pressure system is catered for people in urban areas. So by converting to full pressure system, they are straining our infrastructure. So by straining our infrastructure, we get that some people do not uh, get access to water because those that have tapped into our system, they strain the system and they're causing uh, problems. And the other problem that we are facing is that these people, they tend to uh, I mean, um, make illegal connections because they want to have full access to our uh, system. So by doing so, uh, we get a lot of uh, leaks uh, 
and, and uncount, unaccounted for water uh, that we have to manage. And the other thing that we are having, that is the, the most uh, problematic thing, is that we get about 70% uh, of these people uh, coming from rural areas and uh, are an influx to uh, urban uh, areas. So when they flock to the urban areas, we have to make sure that they also get access to clean and safe water because it's also their right to get that uh, water. So uh, when we are doing this, we get that our infrastructure gets strained and we have to uh, make some means uh, for our infrastructure to cater all for all these problems. So we have a design and planning section within Etebini Water and Sanitation that is catering for all these uh, problems that we are encountering so that we can manage our water effectively. So design and, and planning, they are designing the, the infrastructure so that it can uh, reach everyone so that it can cater for everybody, whether it's coming from rural areas or the people that are, also, are already within our system. Uh, and we are hoping that uh, strategically, uh, within the next 25 years, everybody will have uh, access to clean and safe water. How clean and safe is the water in Devon? Now, with so much pride, I would say, our water is tested in accordance with South African uh, natural standards, 241 uh, portable standard uh, of water quality. In the past few years, we have won blue drop certificates. What do I talk about if I talk about the blue drop? When you talk about the blue drop, you're talking about the quality of drinking water. Now, our scientific services or laboratory, they play a vital role when it comes to the standard of drinking water or the quality of water. We have an ongoing monitoring system. All of our reservoirs and distributing points are monitored twice a month to ensure that the water is safe for consumption. All of our boreholes are also monitored once a month and the water in rivers are also monitored as well as the bulk supply is monitored once a month. So this, this means that we always ensure that the water that we use is safe for consumption and clean anyway. Now, how do we know that uh, people get clean water? Every time when you open your tap, you get clean, clean water. We are amongst the best cities when it comes to the quality of drinking water. And we also have the water quality report, which is accessible and can be viewed by anyone so that you can see how or where do we stand when it comes to the quality of water. You can Google that under a tag mini, a www under a tag mini. So you can view at any time. How does reusable water work? I like this topic because most people, they think reusable water can kill you. No, it won't. What is reusable water? Reusable water is also called grey water. Grey water is made from water that comes from your bathroom, from your sink, and not from the toilet, uh, as well as from the washing machine. Now, grey water means it's the water that was left out when you were rinsing your clothes or the dishes. This water can be used for different purposes, but please, not for drinking purposes. You can use your grey water to water your plants, to water your garden, to wash your car, to wash your yard, as well as to flush your toilet. This will save you a lot of money. As I've indicated before, before that our country faced a, a drought crisis. Now, when you use a reusable water, you'll be saving us water, not for yourself only, but for the future generation. Remember, this is a very precious resource. We all need to be responsible citizens. Take your turn and save water. Each drop counts. Thank you.